What do you make of the controversial eighth chapter of the apostolic exhortation Amoris Laetitiae that some claim allows the divorced and remarried, parentheses, living in adultery, unparentheses, to receive the Eucharist? Are we now permitted to break objective moral norms? Well, that's a whole lot of questions. No, we're never allowed to break objective moral norms. When I read Amoris Laetitiae, so Pope Francis, he pulls out the big guns, Thomas Aquinas, all the big guys in that chapter. And as I, as I read that, I, I said to myself, is this the controversial chapter? I don't see the problems. Um, I read it like two years ago. I need to read it again to really give us a lot of, a lot of answer. But the short thing, the short answer would be, follow the Pope. Like seriously, you know, throughout history, when people don't follow the Pope, they, they begin different Protestant religions. They go out on their own, they go crazy, they whatever. Follow the Pope. I mean, he is the Pope, you know. And uh, here, let me, let me say a little bit about Pope Francis before I get to this next one. So, when I've always wanted to keep up with a Pope, and Pope Benedict wrote a ton, and I was like new in seminary and trying to learn things and stuff, so I was like, oh, I'm not, not going to keep up with him. So I was over in Rome, March 13th of 2013, when Pope Francis became Pope. I was in time, no, not Times Square, pardon me. I was in St. Peter's Square, and it was really, really cool. I'm like, wow, we have a new Pope. I'll keep up with him. So for his first two and a half years as Pope, I read like everything he said. You can, I printed it all out. I'm killing trees, paving the way through the rainforest. And, and you can come to my office and I still have the whole stack of paper. After two and a half years, I started working on my thesis, which then I didn't have time to keep up, but I kept up with him for two and a half years. And he rubs a lot of people the wrong way, and people say, oh, he's not very clear. And I challenge people, and people get mad at me for this, but I challenge, me, ch challenge people, he's more clear than Jesus was. Think about that. Seriously, go back to the Bible, read what Jesus says, think about that. Um, but to understand Pope Francis or any Jesuit, he's more interested in the question than the answer. That's very, very important. I had a Jesuit professor at Sacred Heart when I was there, and he, he was all, he's like going through all these questions and all these questions. Oh, what about this? What about that? And the course is going on and on, and all these questions, more questions, more questions. And we're like, okay, we're running out of time. Are we going to get to an answer at some time? Oh yeah, we will. Oh great, okay. So more questions, more questions. We we're going on to the last class out of what, 16 classes, whatever it is. You know, are we gonna get to the answer? Oh yeah, the last class. Oh cool. So we get to the last cl class. More questions, more questions, more questions. The last half of the class, he gives us the answer. Jesus Christ on the cross, that's the answer, boom. <laughs> and I brought that up to someone one time. I was like, yeah, this is a Jesuit. He's more interested in the question than the answer. And so, so there's a lot of truth to that, and there is some wisdom to that, too. Not that we want to take questions where we have an answer and throw out the answer. You know, as uh, John Stockwell once told me, you don't want your, your, mind to be, your mind to be so open that your brains fall out. You know, that's G.K. Chesterton, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. I just quote John Stockwell. But, um, but like to a certain extent, once you learn two plus two is four, it's like, okay, two plus four, two is four, moving on. There are many questions that are not that simple. And when you have to sit with them, when there's not an easy answer, and you don't give yourself an easy answer because there's not one, to sit with a question and wrestle with a question forces you to sit and wrestle with God and forces you to encounter God. And that's not a bad thing. And I think that's what the Jesuits are all about.